with the nuclear for climate founder Robert Parker. Robert, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. Uh, in the cost debate, what do you put the price at? Well, when we look at the cost of energy, we've got to consider with nuclear that it is an all-up system cost. Nuclear gets rid of all of those costs of that additional transmission, all those batteries and all those bits. So we have to go to system cost. What we saw yesterday was a really good example with Premier of New South Wales, NINS, claimed, for example, that wholesale energy costs were reducing. Well, no, for the, for the month of May, they were threefold in New South Wales and they looked like tracking the same way. So nuclear can stabilise that volatility and that's what we've got to be looking at. We don't have a precise cost right now on nuclear power plants, but we have got to get to the situation where we can be comparing one system with the other, and we're not doing that yet. Well, uh, I'm going to compare anyway because uh, I'm glad I've got you on today because we've got this report by AEMO that's um, been published in part in the Financial Review this morning. And AEMO, which I think is majority government-owned, but it's moving against Peter Dutton's nuclear plan. It wants another $3 billion for transmission lines to support the shift to renewables. But it also pricing the required investment in transmission, generation and storage at $122 billion by 2050. So that's the alternative argument at the moment. Have you got a thought on that? Um, no, I have not seen that particular costing. We are using the costs that come from CSIRO's gen cost report. And that shows that if we went for a nuclear system, it would give consumers electricity at about half the cost of one that was totally reliant upon renewables. We've got to keep in mind that we don't know in that report that they're releasing how much of that costs the total reported uh, 13,500 kilometres of new transmission that AMO are telling us. Often they feed this bit out in drips and drabs, so we don't know the full context of that number they're quoting. When we can't even get snowy hydro done, though, do you forgive people for thinking that uh, nuclear, it's a pipe dream, it's too far away, it's too tough, it's too expensive, etc.? We know that the fastest way to reduce emissions and to introduce low-carbon energy by precedent is nuclear energy. They did it in France. They did 58 reactors in 22 years. They did it in Ontario. That's a place with the same population and the same land area as New South Wales plus Victoria. They did 18 or 20 reactors there in a period of 20 years. So it can definitely be done. Precedent shows it can be done. And best of all, it uses a very consolidated small grid. We won't need all those batteries. We'll need some storage but certainly about one quarter of all of that storage would be required in a yeah. nuclear system. So it can certainly do the job and then, quickly. And just finally on the waste, the problem with waste, Robert. The problem with waste is, is really a bit of a smokescreen. The South Australian Royal Commission on Nuclear Energy, they looked into the most sensible way of dealing with used nuclear fuel. And they found that if you put it in a deep geological repository 500 metres down in granite, it's never coming back. But the future will also be that that used nuclear fuel can be burned up in Generation 4 reactors. China's looking at, at that. France is looking at that. The Japanese have looked at that. It's the coming technology that will power the world for a millennia. OK, Robert Parker, good to have you with us this morning. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon.